Alrighty, so like always with the Leeds Cup review, I am doing this right after the day where all the action is going to finish, but today is going to be a little bit different. I am going to do the review on the day of these Leeds Cup action, and that starts uh, in just a bit where Atlanta is going to be playing against Kruzusu in an afternoon game, and I always wonder why this the Leeds Cup doesn't uh, do more afternoon games. I mean, I know uh, a lot of these games are, are prime time games, and maybe that gives the audience, but... I don't have these kind of kind of matinee games as we would see in just a bit between Atlanta United versus Cruz Azul. But that being said, in terms of last night's action, we only had three games that happened last night, two uh, of them involving MLS team. And we start off with the first one, which is Inter Miami versus Tigres. And I got to say, this game felt like a playoff game. And this game, I would not be surprised. We might see this, this in the knockout round or even in the the final as well because it definitely had that that kind of feeling it's between two very good good team from their respective league and in the end uh tigres was the one that is able to get get the win as it is always the case whenever there's a big game involving mls team versus versus tigres it's usually tigres the one that that is on on the winning edge of the game don't don't tell that to to the columbus crew fan they'll they'll say that well we we beat tigres and uh, in in the Concacaf Champions Cup, but anyway, uh, in the first half, uh, lots of empty seats inside NRG Stadium. Uh, they announced the attendance something like forty eight thousand fans, which you know it's still pretty good in terms of a, a Leeds Cup game. It's the second highest uh, attended game behind the Chivas versus San Jose Earthquakes game that had fifty thousand plus, and they actually opened the full stadium up, which is kind of surprising because I feel like you know if you're going to have a, a um, attendance that's like forty. 8,000 for why not just close the upper deck and make it uh, feel like the, the whole stadium uh, is packed towards. And also, also, this game could have easily gone 70,000 if Messi, of course, was playing. But obviously, coming into this Leeds Cup, we already know that Inter Miami was not going to have their Talos uh, number 10 in this game. Uh, but I thought early on, Tigres actually dictate the play early, which is something you don't see often uh, for an opponent facing against Inter Miami. It's usually Inter Miami the one that usually dictate uh, possession. And as we'll see uh, in the possession stats, it actually favored Tigres in this game. Uh, in the 10th minute, there was a shot for a penalty for Miami not given. The first shot of the game did see Guzman denying Campana from close range. But then the first shot for Tigres, it's in the back of the net. It's Brunetta scoring from Ibanez to give Tigres a 1-0 lead. And it was a banger there for Brunetta. I mean, we know that he he, he is capable of those. We saw it in, in the MLS All, All-Star skill challenge and yeah just like that tigris leads one nothing ibani is himself trying to get on the score sheet but he hits it onto the roof of the net before flores hits one uh right to counter in the 25th minute tigris definitely had the momentum and it looked like it was going to be a be a long night for miami because we know that when tigris gets going yeah they, they're an unstoppable force uh there was a, a shout for a penalty for tigris not given and during that we then had some coming together between rojas and karaoke uh, uh, or we had some coming together after Rojas and Carioca. Basically, she has some choice words. Somebody tells me they weren't talking about what's the best best uh, Texas barbecue to eat a after the game is, is over, but also not a big surprise when you have a man two of this game where there's always a coming together between an MOS team and a Liga MX team. Uh, Redondo then hits it right to Guzman before Bernada throws it wide from long range, and then Taylor flashed one just wide from close range, and we head to halftime with Tigres leading one nothing. but you can Kind of tell it was already a bit of a competitive game with both teams getting some chances of their own. In the second half, uh, Quinones would headset wide from close before Rojas would flash from wide in the near post. But Dondo then hits one right to Guzman. Uh, we then get get a ton of cha changes uh, around the 69th minute mark. Nice. Uh, there was seven subs that was coming in for both teams. Four from Miami and three from Tigres. That is probably the biggest line change I, I have have seen so far not only in the Leeds Cup but really in this season I have not remember a, a, a game so far this season where there's a combine of that many subs that is coming up at the same time but knowing both coaches they, they saw what what's going on on and they want to kind of change changing up a little bit that's kind of what we're, we're seeing right now and in fact in the 72nd minute a penalty was given to Inter Miami after Campana was brought down by Pizarro there in the spot so Campana of course wins the pe penalty he takes the penalty but we know that when you face the, the likes of Naho Guzman it's not gonna be an easy customer to be you know he he, he knows he's gonna try to get into Campana head good news for Campana is that he, he wasn't baited in terms of uh 
uh, Guzman's t tactics, and he buries that one to tie the game up at one apiece. And then he denied Campana off of a deflection in the 76th minute. And what a save this was from now who Guzman. And he definitely have had some, some words with Campana after making that big save, as he is, because, you know, between hit him and Emi Martinez, probably the biggest uh, shit house kind of goalkeeper we have ever, ever seen in seen before he I mean he, he just loved the the role of the villain and loved the he is kind of kind of your 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 peak level donkey cap level kind of a goal goalkeeper but that being said I thought the momentum might be with Miami they were looking to try to get the lead instead it's Tigres the one that gets the the lead it's Vigon scoring here to give Tigres a 2-1 lead while one of the substitutes coming off the bench and yeah Kristoff yeah this is one that he wants to have back he basically cleared it right to be gone here we talk about the the problem with Miami this season when it comes to their defense their defense has been a little bit better but yeah this is not a great moment there for 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 Kristoff just cleared it right into the path of one of the Tigres players he's not going to miss and that give Tigres the lead back into this game Alfonso did look to respond but he heads it right to Guzman and then Gignac who puts it over from long range notice I didn't mention Gignac name until the second minute of stoppage time they did do a really good job in terms of shutting him down throughout this game but in the end, it doesn't matter because Tigres, they get the 2-1 win. They top the group. And this is also the first time that Inter-Miami has suffered a Leeds Cup loss um, in, in their club history. Remember last year when they won the whole competition, they didn't lose a single ga game uh, on their way to lifting, lifting the, the Leeds Cup. So, yeah, Tigres definitely sent a message in, in this the, at, at, through this game. And that, again, this is not a big surprise. We knew that coming into this tournament, Tigres is going to be one of the 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 team to to beat and as it is always the case whenever an MLS team face against Tigres it, 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 they are an absolute killer when it comes to fa facing against MLS team it is very rare that M MLS team is a, a able to beat Tigres and again going back to what I said I know Columbus fan you 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 can you can definitely uh, boast that you you are uh, were one of the rare team to to beat the almighty Tigres especially down in Al, Al Volcan which is a place that 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 place is. It's just just pretty much a house of horror for MLS team. But the shots in this one, again, pretty even. Nine shots apiece, three shots on goal for the five that Tigris had, five shots off target for the two that Tigris had, two shots off block for the one that Miami had, and possession wise, 54% possession compared to the 46% possession that Inter Miami has in this game. Just kind of shows you how competitive this game is. And again, I will not be surprised if we might see this matchup down down the, the line. If, it, if we do see a matchup like this down the line, you know Inter Miami would love to ha have some revenge. Uh, against Tigres in the next game. But that being said, moving on in terms of the next match is Vancouver versus Tijuana. And for Cholos, this felt like it was a very similar game to the last game against LAFC, where they played well in the first half and then they kind of faded away in the second half and Vancouver kind of woke up in this game. Now, the first shot of the game did see Priso puts it high from long range before Gonzalez uh, with Tijuana's first shot, but he missed high there. But then on their second shot, it's in. Uh, and actually, I got the wrong... Wrong uh, uh, initial there. I, I put Tigres as the, the team that scored. Let me just fix that real quick. But yeah, uh, Castellana would score from Barbosa to give Cholos a 1 nothing lead. And then Takaoka would deny an Efren Alvarez from close range before Castellana would whiff a, a shot from close range as the, the flag, of course, came up. And he's happy the fact that the flag came up because he was in on goal, goal there, there uh, and he basically whiff, whiffs a, 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 a shot shot there but there was no doubt the momentum was with which cholos as the white caps they need to wake up because it has not been a great start for them and mind you um if cholos were able to to get a win in this game um i think uh if i'm not mistaken yeah they i think that they, they would be out, out because lafc is, is already qualified into the next round so they can lose this this game this is pretty much almost like a winner or take all kind of situation uh, in this one, uh, Rodriguez then then denied White, who had a free header from point blank range before Vega puts one into the side netting. And again, like the last game, Cholos is getting some good ch chances as they are looking to try to get that second goal. But one of the things that was a problem for Cholos in the last game, they weren't being clinical in front of goal. Uh, Burhalter then had a shot that took a deflection and, and goes high before Takaoka would deny Barbosa. And on the second half, Gomez just blast that one high. And then Castaneda would head one onto the roof of the net. And then Gonzalez would whiff one as the flag went up as he is in on goal in the, the 43rd minute. I wrote that moment kind of sums up Cholo so far in this Leeds Cup. They have just not been clinical in terms of their finishing. And that maybe is something 
think that also play into the elite league play as well because I remember <clears throat> hearing the commentators in the last game they mentioned how this has been one of the problems for for Ch Cholos in the Apertura. They they were a team that that can can do very well when it comes to their build up and gets to the their 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 clinical spot. But when it when it comes to the final third play, yeah, that's been that's been a little bit lackluster. Also, one one thing that I I, I didn't mention uh last time between Cholos and LAFC, and I'm gonna mention here. What happened to Reynoso? Because uh, Reynoso has not been been on this roster uh, for for Cholos, and that again, you know, from what I heard, there's rumors saying that he he, he might might have ghosted uh, Cholos uh, as well. He might just got got a wall just like he did with Minnesota. And I gotta say, you know, I, I like Reynoso in terms of doing his his time when he's on the pitch for Minnesota. But man, I am so glad that Minnesota sold him him off, and they might have just got some high, highway robbery. Um, uh, or got away with highway robbery in Minnesota with the way that they sell, sold him off to, to Cholos with some sort of transfer fees, only for Cholos to realize that, yeah, there's a reason why the Luton sold him him off, and that, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see see what's going on, on with him. I mean, you talk about a guy, guy that, you know, a classic example of a, a, a player that has so much talent, only let down because of, of his in, immaturity uh, in his mind. So, yeah, um, that, of course, well, uh, that's kind of something I want to to quickly mention because I, I haven't seen Reynoso uh being on on the roster. And I was actually kind of looking forward to see how he's going to do, do in, in this Leeds Cup because I believe in in the last Leeds Cup, uh, I don't think he played a single minute uh for for Minnesota. But we do head to halftime with Cholos leading one nothing in the second half. White did had a shot that was deflected and wide as the Whitecaps were start started to to push to get the equalizer and they they played uh brightly. Something tells me that you know Vanny Sartini must have had some choice words for this team. By the way, Vanny Sartini's were not, not on the, the touchline for, for, for this game, but um what's also kinda of interesting is that both head coach was not not on the touchline for this game. Both head coach actually got a red card in the last game. Sartini of course got a red card against LAFC and then Juan Carlos Osorio got a red card in probably a couple uh, of more games after he decided to headbutt one of the, the, the referee in that game against LAFC as well. But uh after Alvarez hits one right to Takuoka uh, on the other end, uh, Fafa Pico would score. He just cannot stop scoring goals right now for the Vancouver Whitecaps. As he scored here from Johnson on a lightning counterattack. By the way, Apple TV came very close of not even capturing that goal. Like they show the replay of Alvarez shot from Taco Cut. They literally just about switching it back back to uh, the, the counterattacking moment. And that, yeah, again, almost a Fox Sports moment. Again, Apple TV, this is not the first time I've mentioned it. They've gone gone a little bit worse when it comes to the the production some level, and, and and it sucks because you know that's one of the things that I've always get frustrated about Fox Sports showing unnecessarily um kind of replay and then just missing a goal and they almost did it in this this equalizer for the Whitecaps and then Rodriguez would absolutely rob uh, uh Levante Johnson with kind of a Scott Sterling kind kind of, kind of save but yeah he definitely paid the price uh for for making that Scott Sterling save and basically. Uh, was knocked down out on the ground for a bit, and that yeah, this is the second consecutive game we've seen seen Cholos have, have had a player that ha has to be stretched out because of a scary injury. Uh, Cunha says he he did give the thumbs up as he was stretcher off, but uh, income Corona, the the backup goalkeeper for Ch Cholos and the experienced backup goalkeeper for Cholos, replaced him here, and his first test came in the 69th minute. Nice. Uh, Burhalter would hit one right to Corona before Vite would also put one right to Corona. No doubt the Whitecaps had all the momentum up to this point. They were pressing for the lead. Uh, White just clipped the pulse on a curling shot, but then the 77th minute, on the back of sustained pressure, uh, they finally get the lead. And what a redemption this is for Levante J Johnson. I mean, in the last game, obviously, uh, he, he was definitely slated from a lot of Whitecaps fans because of the way way that he, he didn't finish his chances, and then it caused LAFC to go the other end and score what would be the equalizer and probably might have cost, uh, caused Vancouver a chance to advance in that game. But he made a redemption story in this one, scoring in this one and also assisting earlier in this. As he scored here from Kubas to to give Vancouver a 2-1 lead, and then uh, things get bad for Morris Pacholos as Mijic Gio would get himself sent off for a denial of goal score off opportunity and then in the 83rd minute Vancouver pretty much put this game all, all out of doubt as P P Pedro Vite would score from Pico to make it 3-1 in favor of Vancouver and really just kind of have a gift that that 
uh, they got because it was a WTF turnover from, from Cholos. Vancouver took full advantage of that. And yeah, in the end, they win 3-1 in this game against Tijuana. Shots in this one, uh, pretty even. 12 shots compared to 14 that Cholos had. 7 shots on goal compared to 4 that Tijuana has. Oh, obviously, uh, it was pretty even because uh, Tijuana actually played really well. And I would say it's kind of a tale of two halves. I thought Cholos were the better team in the first half. But most importantly, the Whitecaps were the better team in the second half. Uh, two shots off target for the six that Cholos had. Both teams had three shots on the clock. And possession-wise, 57% possession compared to 43% possession the Vancouver Whitecaps has in this game. And with this win, the Vancouver Whitecaps are joining LAFC. And they actually topped the gr group because uh, they, they get the three points in this one. And also get the, the PK shootout win. So that's that's how how, how, how much uh, the, the margin can can be so different in the Leeds Cup. You could have a situation where Vancouver, if they lose this game, they would have been out of the, the Leeds Cup. But if they, they win this game, they, they finish top top of, of the standings. But for Cholos, they're out of the the, 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 the Leeds Cup uh, with no no points. And just really, I don't think they play badly. Just like Coet, though, they, they play pretty well throughout this tournament. But as we usually see with a lot of these teams, and they're the bottom of Liga MX or one of the weaker team in Liga MX. Yeah, they're, they're finishing is the reason why I let them down, even when they're they're playing very well. But there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of looking at these two games that happened uh, in yesterday's Leeds Cup action involving MLS team. Obviously, there was three games, but one of them was between Rayados versus Pumas. And obviously, I don't do uh, review uh, of a matchup involving all Liga MX team because this is an MLS channel after all. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. Uh, we got a busy night tonight on... On Sunday, of course, we got the afternoon game between Atlanta versus Cruz Azul, as I mentioned. But we also ha have the nightcap game, and I'll once again do what I usually do. Probably I'll review three, three of the, the games, and then just kind of uh, mention the other notable resort after I review those three games detailedly. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.